Welcome back to da 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 Yeah! I told you I'd give it to you. So here it is, your three for one special. Here we go. We're gonna get right into it, otherwise this is gonna be a 20 minute movie, and here we go. So, we're going all the way back to Sunday. Let's take a trip back to Sunday. We're in 1 John 2, 28 through 33. Here we go. Let's get into the scripture, and let's get into our two questions. Boom. And now, little children, abide in him, so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is, and everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. All right, what's the writer saying? We're going to start off back here at 28. Abide in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame and his coming. All right, so when Christ's second coming comes, when he comes back, one or two things are going to happen. We're either going to have confidence that our Savior is our Savior and that we are saved because of him, and we will have confidence in that sacrifice, his salvation, Ha! Ah, our king! Or we're going to shrink back in shame. Or we're going to try to run and hide. Or we're going to be like, oh my goodness, no, I actually didn't do that. I don't, ah, uh, ah, uh, hide me! Uh. Can't hide from him. Abide in him. Love him. Obey him. Be grateful to him. And show that in your everyday life. Because everyone who practice righteousness has been born of him. This isn't saying that everybody born righteous is, but no. Practices righteousness. Who's righteous? Jesus. How do we be more like him? We do what he did. It's practice, okay? Our practice is here in this life right now, that this is the practice that we get. Because we're not gonna be fully like Jesus. We're not gonna be sanctified. Fully sanctified, which that word means process of sanctification, is to be made in the image of Christ, sanctified. So we're not going to be that this side of heaven. But glory be to God, we got time to practice. Okay? So either practicing righteousness or you're practicing the opposite of righteousness, which is lawlessness. All right. So the reason why the world does not know us is because it didn't know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet appeared. What we will be has not yet appeared. Our, our holy state, our righteousness, our sanctification, to be made in the image of Christ, sanctification, is not going to be this side of heaven. It's going to be when we're with him, okay? In our perfected bodies. Now, everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure, as he is pure. We have to practice the purification of ourselves because he is pure. How do we know how to be purified? It's in the scripture. How do we know how to practice to be like Jesus? It's in the scripture. How do we know anything about Jesus? It's in the scripture. You guys are getting this. Again, repetitive from John. If you know it, show it. If you say that he is your savior, show that. We have the opportunity now to practice righteousness this side of heaven. So when he comes, we will not be put to shame, but we will know him as our risen king and our savior. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. How can I apply this to my life? I pretty much already covered that. If you know it, show it. Oh, you guys are so loud. I think I heard you on this end. Moving on. Boom. Monday, 1 John 3, 4 through 10. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, and he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. 
The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. For God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. By this it is evident who are the children of God, and who are the children of God. Oh, uh, by this it is evident who are the children of God, and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. All right. What's this saying? Drop some comments. Put some comments in the in the Facebook comments, in the YouTube comment. You guys, what is the word of God saying? If you continue on deliberately sinning, you don't know the Lord. If you continue, if you say, I know this is bad. I'm going to purposefully keep doing this. Then it is direct opposition of God. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of their father, the devil. So when we, we talk about identity, we talk about who we are. We see here that we put our faith in Jesus Christ. We believe God. It's different than believe in God. We believe God that what he says is true, that we are sinners and we need a savior because our punishment is eternal hell and separation from God the Father. But Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross for us so that we could don his righteousness so that we can have a relationship with God. It's not about identity. It's not about who, who are we, but more whose are we. Who do we belong to? Scripture's clear. There's two camps. You either belong to God, the Father, or you belong to Satan. There's no middle ground. There's no straddling. There's no, hmm, we're just gonna we're just gonna test out both sides and see which one I like. No. Anybody tells you to try, just try Jesus. No, he's not, he's not like those little little hot dogs outside of Meyer that they used to hand out before the Rona. That you know, you go up there and try a sample. Try a sample, and then if you like it, go buy the big package. You know, get if you don't like it, it's fine. No. He's not a sample pack. You either of the Father or of the devil putting your faith in Jesus Christ of the Father. He looks at us as children, his children, his family. We're adopted as sons and daughters and heirs. Ha! Huh. Why would we go back to practicing sinning? Doesn't make any sense, does it? John is clear. By this, it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. The proof is in the pudding. Ask your parents or grandparents what that slogan means. The proof is in the pudding. You are either making decisions and practicing righteousness or you're making decisions and practicing lawlessness. You're doing one or the other. Which one are you doing? Application. Stop doing the lawlessness thing. Do the righteous thing. How do we learn about what the righteous thing is? This is getting familiar, you would think. We learn about who Jesus Christ is through his word. He tells us what he tells us who he is and how to follow him. Do that application. Because without the Bible, we got nothing. Without God's word, we got nothing. Absolutely nothing. <sighs> how do we learn about Jesus Christ? You read his word. He is the word. Come on, get all fired up now. We're going, we're on to step three. We got plenty of time left. Here we go. Tuesday. 1 John 3, 11 through 16. The word of God says this. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We should not be like Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not be surprised, brothers, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know, love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. 1 John 3, 11-16 hmm. Hmm. Whoever does not love abides in death. We're talking about the biblical love. 
We're not talking about the love, love, fluffy kisses and, and mm, fluff butterflies. If I could do any sort of dramatic thing right here with the editing, that's where I'm going to put it in. Love is a choice. It is not solely a butterfly little feeling in your gut when you see somebody. Love is an action. Speaking specifically to my marriage with my wife, there are some days where we wake up and I got out of bed and I got, I got morning breath. And I'm just all, that <sighs> burp, scratch my belly, walk to the kid. Do you think she's looking over at me and it's like, oh, that man of mine, mm mm mm. No. I mean, you're not always, get that out of your head right now, you're not always going to be head over heels, butterfly love with everybody around you, especially your spouse, once you are ready for marriage. That's a long way from now. Love is an action. Love is a choice. To biblically love somebody is to tell them the truth. Number one thing in, in, in all the relationship stuff, what do you want most from a best friend? What do you want most from a spouse? How do you know somebody really loves you? that they're not afraid to tell you the truth because nobody likes a liar. What does the truth say? The truth says, By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us. We know his love because we know the gospel, that he died for us. We know that. We need to die to ourself, application. We need to die to ourself and live in him. So that we love those around us. That we encourage them, we lift them up, we tell them the truth in love. So much in this world right now is all smoke and mirrors and hidden agendas and weird perspectives. And well, why can't your truth be your truth and my truth be your tr my truth and all this subjective. We covered this before. Subjective truth. It's all based on opinion. Objective truth cuts to our soul. His word cuts through us. And shows us that we need true love. And what better example of true love is for somebody to die for you. If you know that, show it. Be that living example. Practice righteousness. Study the word to see how and who Christ is and how he walks. So that we can follow his example. I don't want you following me. I don't want you following your buddies. I don't want you following your parents. Your parents shouldn't want you to follow them. We all want you to follow Christ because it's his path that is going to get you closer to God. Not Tim's path. Not their path. Not anybody else's path. Your path. You are held accountable for you. You put your faith in Jesus Christ. That his path is for you. He died for you. You walk that path. Don't turn back. Don't run back to that lawlessness back there. Keep moving forward. Take the next step closer to God. It's not about who you are, specifically identity. It's about whose you are. Who do you belong to? Belong to God? We belong to the devil. Because there's no in between. Love you guys. I do. You know how I know love? Because he first loved us. We're going to get into that on Wednesday. But since I know it, I do my best to show it. Grace and peace. Love you guys. We'll see you.